Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything uh, you have done for us. Thank you for May Day. Thank you for this time now. Please speak to us, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I, I uh, love May Day. You'll be pleased to know. I had knew nothing about May Day until I started dating my now wife. And she br- I remember, still remember my first ever May Day where she, she, she said, you've got to come to May Day. It's brilliant. And I came to May Day for the first time ever. And I believe this happens to a lot of people who witness May Day for the first time that they've never seen. And my brain didn't quite, couldn't quite compute what was going on. It was both brilliant, and I couldn't understand why there were, where, where were things like, um, why there were things like jellyfish in a parade. And I couldn't understand why, why there were these strong men pulling this. I couldn't understand it, but I didn't need to understand it. That's why I realized, because it's brilliant. It's so fun, and it's just a massive celebration, which is what I love about May Day. Now, I wonder what you would say is the best thing about May Day. I asked some people the other day, and some said, well, it just brings, it just brings everyone together, doesn't it? The whole town and more come, and everyone's together just having a good time. The kids love it because there's a space for everybody who wants to be in May Day. A favorite thing someone mentioned to me was that the number of kneels that the crown bearer does on the way to the May Queen, that was a favorite bit for them for some reason. I asked someone yesterday what their favorite bit was, and they said, it's always Jack in the Green. It's a wonderful tradition. It's just a great opportunity to come together and celebrate. And the reason it's a great opportunity to come, why that's so important, rather, is because we we need to celebrate things, don't we? And we need to have a good time. Because sometimes life's not always easy. Children have to go to school and work hard. (laughs) Children have to go to school and do exams. We have responsibilities to each other we can't shake off, and they're difficult sometimes. We, we have to work hard in our jobs to provide for our people we care about. Sometimes things happen to us in life that we have no control over, but are really sad. We can get ill. Things can go badly. And so celebrating is such a massive gift, isn't it? Excuses to celebrate are wonderful because you have a good time and it lifts your spirits and when good things happen and you celebrate, it makes the hard things a bit easier. Today, we're going to look at a Bible story which tells us what God celebrates in. And it's a story which gives a reason for celebration that runs very, very deep indeed. If May Day's are 160 years old, and there's loads of cause of celebration with May Day, and it runs quite deep in the fabric of Nutsford, this story, well, it's as old as the hills. It's, it's 2,000 years old, but it's a story of a God who is even older than that, who's lasted forever. It's what he celebrates in. And it's a story of two sons, and an incredible father. Now, I want to ask you a question, and I want you in groups, if you're, if you're able, and just in turn to one another, I want, you, I want to ask a question of who you think the best son is in this instance. You ready? Who is the best son? I'm going to describe two sons. The father had two sons, you see. One was older, one was younger. Here's the older son. Here's what he does. He works really hard on his father's farm. His father had a big farm. He was a wealthy, wealthy man. He had a big farm and employed lots of people. But the, son, the older son was really hard on the father's farm. And he's given an inheritance by his father, but he uses it to make the farm better. He's given loads of money, but he uses it to make the farm better. And the third one? We've got something else coming. He never, you can't see that last, but he never, ever disobeys his father. He always does what his father asks. That's the older son. Okay, hold him in your mind. Now we're going to look at the younger son. 
asks his dad for his share of the money before his dad's ready to give it to him. Asks his dad for loads of money even when it's not the right time for it, okay? That's the first thing. Second, when he gets money from his dad, he runs away from his father and his family and he plans to be away forever and to just leave them. And third, he spends all of the money his father worked for and gave to him on silly things until it all runs out. I don't think this will take you very long, but just turn. Who is the best son? Ten, and tell me, ask each other why. Ten seconds. Okay. Okay, okay. Who would like to shout out? Who, 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 who thinks, let's do a show of hands, who thinks the younger son is the best son? Who dares raise their hands? Who thinks the older son is the best son? Yes. Would anyone like to say why they think that? Yeah. Never did anything bad. Always obeys his father and mother. Wouldn't that be great, everyone? <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Exactly. Okay, so we've got these two brothers. So you heard about the younger son. We're going to look now at what happened to the younger son. Because that, that happens in the story. The younger son asks his dad for an inheritance. Normally you give an inheritance when somebody dies, but sometimes you could ask for it beforehand, but it's a bit rude. It's a bit rude. And he gets given, but his father's really kind, and so he gives him loads of money. Loads and loads of money. I've printed some money off him, and this is a fraction of the money that he'd have been given, because his father was really wealthy, and um, his father was really wealthy, wouldn't have given him absolutely loads. And he gathers it all together, and rather than using it for good, he goes, right, brilliant, I've got so much money now, I can finally get away. And he leaves his family and his father and he runs off to a foreign land far away. Thing is, though, he spends his money. He just spends a fiver, a tenner here, more there, more there. He doesn't really think about his money. He's just so busy, just spending it. He thinks, finally, I've got... So what would you do if you had loads of money? What would you be tempted to do if you just had so much money in your pocket all at once? Spend on things you don't... You are quite fun, that you've been dreaming of buying all this time. Spending, spending, spending. Spending, spending, spending. All this spending, 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 spending. But all of a sudden, his money ran out, and he had no money at all. His dad had worked so hard for that money, and he's just spent it on nothing really at all. It's like he's poured his money down the drain. And you know what else happened It was even worse? In the land he was in, there was a famine, which means there was no food. And so the son has left his father, taken the money, spent all the money, and now there's a family, a famine, and he's got no family around to turn to because he's left them. And he asks people for help, and nobody helps him. And it's probably because they have all got no money, not money. he's really, really hungry, and nobody wants to help him. And it's probably because they've all got their own families to look after because there's a famine and there's no food and there's not enough to go around. Why would someone help this guy who's run away from his family? So it's not looking great. He gets really sad and he really, really struggles. And he gets so sad, actually, that he gets a job looking after some pigs. I've got a picture of some pigs, I think. It'll come up. They aren't very nice. But he gets so hungry that he decides, he gets so hungry that he gets desperate to eat the food that the pigs eat. Now, I've got, I had a look on the internet about what the foods that pigs eat. I don't know if you know, but they pretty much eat, well, I'm no farmer, but it looks like they eat pretty much all your scraps. So I've got my scraps here. I'm just going to pour them in a bowl. What have we got here? We've got some, lots of peelings, some eggshells. Some, yeah, some banana peel there. Anything else that we think's good? 
I'm not going to reach in there. That's about, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. And um, they like stuff like liquids, so stuff like milk that you pour on. You might know, stir it around. And I was wondering, is anybody hungry? Was that a yes? Did I get, Ola, were you hungry? I think she's nodding ahead, isn't she? So we'll get you some. Jack, how about you? Are you feeling peckish? So I've got you both a bowl because you were nodding your heads. Just think, guys, what would it take you to be so hungry that you wanted to eat this? It'd be pretty, you'd have to be really hungry, wouldn't you? I bet you're thinking, I will never eat that. I will never, ever eat that. Do you want to see Village Wedding? Does it look nice? No. Pigs would eat that, though. It smells ringing. I know, I know. I just imagine, like, I had to drive that in my car this morning, drive it down. Anyway, if anyone would like some later, it's just here. But you get the point. He was so hungry, this son. He had everything before with his father, so hungry that he wants to eat pig food. So he, um, he comes to his senses, and he realizes, my, f- my father and his house, they've got so much food, he decides to go home, but... He doesn't decide to go home and be, be his son again because he realizes he's, done re- he's been really rude. He's been so rude to his dad. He's taken all his money, thrown it away. He's, um, he's basically said to dad, I don't want you in my life. I kind of want you dead, dad. So I'm going to leave you. I'm just getting away from you. But he thinks, so he thinks his dad, oh, I can't go back and like, ask to be what I was, but maybe I could be his servant because they at least had food. Now here's the thing. The reason that this is a story that Jesus told about God, and the reason he did is he wanted to help some people understand, well, that's what that's what we we're like a bit. In fact, that's what I'm like when it comes to God. I say to God, I want your I want all your money, all the good stuff you give. He doesn't give me money, all the good stuff, but I don't want you in my life. And I say to him, Thank you very much. I'll just do what I like. That's what I, I'm like at heart. And for a long time, that was, was me, really. And the, the Bible says, the Christian teaching says, well, that's actually all of us. We all do that to God as well. So that's, that's you as well. That's me and you. Like the younger son, run away from God and get in a bit of trouble and a bit of a, in, and get in kind of, well, get our souls in a pretty tricky situation. And we can think of God, we can think, oh, the thing is I know I've run away from him, he won't want me back because I've been so bad. He won't want me back at all. But the next bit of the story is incredible because it shows us what God is like. So the son, he decides to come home home and be a servant. And there's a big question, what do people think the father will do? When Jesus was telling this story, he was telling it to loads of religious people, and they all would have said, you should not even let him in. How bad has he been? You've, he, he, he has wanted the father dead. He should be cut off. Don't let him in. But that's not what the father does. The father is what God does. It's like he's standing on the steps looking out for his son because he loves him so much. And as he sees his son far away... He doesn't even wait for the son to come and walk to him, you know, superior. He doesn't even wait. He runs. Old men never ran in those days. He lifted up his thingy and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran and ran ran all the way to his son. And he got his arms open wide. And before the son could even say a single word to him about being, I'm so sorry, I'm not worthy to be called your son. Please can I be one of your hired servants? The father has gathered him up in his arms and gives him an enormous hug. And he says some amazing words. Let me see if I can find them in the Bible. They were read really really well earlier. He says amazing words. He says, he says, where 
where are we? Before I try to look this up. The father says, bring quickly the best robe. Get a ring and put it back on his finger. And put shoes back on his feet. You guys are wearing clothes which mark your, the honor you have as being crown bearer and May Queen. Only you get to wear them because only you this year are the crown bearer and May Queen. The sons of a, a wealthy father had certain clothes, a special robe and a special ring. Only they were allowed to wear them because they were the sons and no one else had the privilege. The father, this son is so far away and he comes back and straight away the father loves him so much he welcomes him home and he makes him a son again. It's amazing. That's what God is like. He has a massive party and he celebrates. He says, this is what I, God, this is what God is like to us. When we run away, we think we'll come back and I can't, I can't be back friends with God again. Well, he wants to run towards us and embrace us and welcome us home. That's how much God loves everybody who is in this room. You only have to turn back to him and he'll come out and meet you. There's nothing you can do that could put him off you because God is a God full of compassion and mercy and love and he just wants to be with his people. That's all he cares about. Now we're nearly done, but there's one person who's not so happy at all. Not happy at all, and it's not who you'd expect. We all said, didn't we, who, earlier, we said, who was, the, who was the best son? And we all said, well, we all put our hands up and said, the older son, the older son is the best son because he's never done anything wrong, and he always does what the father says. But now, when this party's going on and the son's come home and he's got his ring back and he's got his robe on, the older son finds out about it. He's not even there. He's out working. He comes back and the older brother is absolutely furious. He is so angry. He's so angry. He's so angry that even though the biggest party he's ever seen is happening, he refuses to go in. He says, I am not going in there. But here's the thing. The, the father is so kind that he goes out to his older brother as well. He went out to his younger, brother, his younger son. He goes out to the older brother as well. And he pleads with him to come in. Say, come into the party. Come into the party. And the older brother says, no, I'm not coming in. All these years... I've been working hard all these years. I've been working, oh, look, I've even written out. All these years I've been working hard. You, I got this inheritance and I didn't squander it on all of this stuff. I didn't spend it. I didn't run away. I've put it back into the farm to make it better so you can get more money, Dad. Why should I come in and celebrate that this vagabond son should be welcomed home? That's not, have you ever heard this in your family? That's not fair. Why should he get all of this good stuff when I get nothing? It's a tricky question, isn't it? Why should the younger son get so much? Why shouldn't the older son get a celebration as well? What would you say? To the older son and reveals something about him that he doesn't quite understand about what his life is actually about. Remember, this is about the father is God. He doesn't understand that because he is with the father, he has all he needs. Because he has got God in his life, he has everything he needs. And because his father or his God is so important to him, 
He should be thinking, oh my word, my younger brother has left this all behind and he's lost far away. But he doesn't. He thinks about himself and how important he is and how much he's so much better. Are you ever like that? Do you lose perspective sometimes? But the father seems to think that the older son has lost perspective. And it's very easy to do that if you're a Christian and you've been coming to church a long time, to think that you're really great and anyone else is not that good and you're better than them. It's lost perspective, really, because all the father cares about is his children coming home. And so that's all the older son should have cared about as well. And so where are we? You've had two sons. Both of them have got problems, turns out. One runs away, one thinks he's really, really important and more important than everyone else. But the father, it's the father who's incredible, who runs after the, old, the younger son and he runs after the older son and he gets both of them, he says, brings them home. And he says, come and be with me. You are always welcome here. And that's God's invitation to us. Come, come to me, says God. You are always welcome here. Come home. It's what we call grace as Christians. God's grace, his goodness and kindness, even when we don't deserve it, because that's what God is like. And so as we come to a close, I'm going to say a prayer, and then we're going to, then we're going to sing a song about God's grace. It's very well known. It's called Amazing Grace. And it's, it's the real reason, the deepest, longest, biggest reason to celebrate all the time. Because this God never changes, and we always have a reason to celebrate if we know this God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much indeed that you are a gracious and generous God, and you always give us reason to celebrate because you will always welcome us home. Lord, I pray that we would come home to you today and know you again that we might know your love, your compassion, and your grace in our lives, and that we might come home. And we pray that in Jesus' precious name. Amen.